extent of the private enterprise. You have on the one hand the state apparatus held by the Communist Party. On the other hand, you have a, a capitalist framework. And that's what he says. It's different, I think, from the uh, SPGB and other viewpoints of state capitalism, which generally refuse the two, arguing the state itself is capitalist effectively, or operating as capitalism. He's seeing, seeing them as separate, because the Communist Party actually holds the state, and therefore, the possibility, therefore, of the Communist Party being able to go from there to a, trans a society in transition to uh, a socialist society. But Lenin and Trotsky never thought they could build socialism in one country or in Russia at that time. They were absolutely explicit at the time. <clears throat> I've read 101 times saying, why did Lenin go into Poland? Not in order to conquer Poland. It's not that he cared or didn't care about Poland. He wanted to say he didn't care tons about Poland. He was trying to get to Germany. Why was he trying to get to Germany? In order to assist the revolution in Germany. It was actually desperate acting. He makes it clear it was desperate. Trotsky was opposed to it. But <clears throat> that was why. They knew they couldn't succeed. They were absolutely clear. 101% they couldn't succeed in Russia by itself. They weren't trying to construct socialism. They knew that. <coughs> now I know there are various Stalinists, like my former colleagues, colleagues <clears throat> in the Institute of, what was the Institute of Soviet Studies, who have been trying to argue that Lenin was a Stalinist. That that's just nonsense. And even trying to adapt Trotsky. That's 100% not nonsense. Neither Lenin nor Trotsky ever thought they could build very much in socialist terms. That didn't stop them trying to build up the country or introduce aspects which were better than might have existed under the capitalism, which sometimes could be called socialist with the quotation marks. The militarization of labor, which was introduced actually to support Lenin, not just Trotsky, but Lenin then changed his mind, wasn't anything to do with socialism and non-socialism. The population was starving, for God's sake. There, were, there was no <coughs> industry, it wasn't working, it was down to 13% of what it was. The Labour government of this country proposed exactly the same thing in 1947. What he was talking about was running <coughs> factories under control, in this case it was the control of the trade unions, under discipline so that they could get things going as a temporary measure. That has nothing to do with socialism or non-socialism. Under conditions <coughs> are, uh, where people are starving, conditions of uh, the war wasn't how we finished, and so on. That, uh, that is all it meant, an attempt to maintain the economy going. And there was no other way to actually do it su su successfully except by direction. It certainly wasn't socialist, but they didn't claim it to be socialist. They weren't saying we are socialists doing this. They're saying we are trying to survive in order that we can act as a point of attraction so that <clears throat> for socialism so that we can not in in terms of the site itself, which couldn't, couldn't be a point of attraction, but as a means so that we can support a, a revolution in Germany. That's basically what they were saying. They were holding on in order to assist the revolution through, uh, throughout the world. They are absolutely clear about that. They didn't go as socialists. Now, the, the final point is, <clears throat> I think, makes this question of what is state capitalism. In my view, the Soviet Union, <clears throat> after Stalinism took, took over, it was in no sense capitalist, certainly not state capitalist. It never operated, using the definitions used, it never operated on the basis of profit. Profit was one of many indicators, and most times there was no profit. It was purely formal, never operated on the basis of profit. There was, there was a term called profit, but so what? The crucial thing was whether they fulfilled the plan. The plan itself was itself dubious, that's to say, <coughs> you look at the way the whole thing went, it wasn't planned either. The idea that it was capitalist planning is nonsense. It wasn't capitalism, it wasn't planning. You just go through it and read what the economists later on came to say. They didn't say it at the time. Later on came, 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 came to say. Did they sell their labor power? No, they couldn't sell their labor power. You had an atomized society controlled from, from above. The secret police were absolutely crucial to that atomized society. And if they didn't work, they were hauled into court as parasites. <laughs> and it wasn't a, uh, the parasite law wasn't just a, a law which wasn't um, used. Even in the last years of Gorbachev, several hundred thousand people were taken to court for, for not working. There was no choice. You had to work. And you were under control. There was a series of controls <coughs> on, on movement and on what, on what they did. 
I wasn't going, go, going to all the different forms, but you want to, I could. So, to call that a society which labor power couldn't be sold, where in fact the standard of living was low, and in reality the rate of exploitation was very high, <clears throat> where the workers could not in any sense organize in any case, to call that capitalist <coughs> is, is actually to say that it was much better than it actually was. That for any worker, it was far worse to be in the Soviet Union than even some of the worst capitalist societies, given the way it was. To call it capitalist is to misunderstand what actually existed there. It wasn't, in fact, a socio-economic uh, socio system like capitalism, socialism, feudalism, ancient mode of mode, 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 mode production. It was in a, an abortive form existing in a vacuum of history. And for that reason, it would always threaten to disintegrate until it finally did disintegrate. People who regard as capitalists can't understand its process of movement, why it had to come to an end. It couldn't have lasted. I mean, I, as people know, I, I was writing that critique 20, 20 years before it came to an end. It was obvious that that was its nature. To call it capitalist is to misunderstand it, misunderstand how it was developing and what it actually was. There's no problem condemning it. Anybody who lived in that society condemned it anyway. This is just the you know, unfortunate people living outside it who somehow decided, uh, Stalin's decided to support it. You can only call them unfortunate in any respect. Anyway, it, was, it wasn't state capitalist. That uh, doesn't give you an understanding of what it actually was. As I've just said, it, what follows from that is that one would be as critical as one possibly could as socialists of what existed in, in the Soviet Union. To call it capitalist is to miss that criticism, actually the deep criticism which should actually have been there and often wasn't there. <clears throat> it's not just an abstract thing and it did, wasn't brought into being by Lenin or Trotsky. The point I made earlier was that a new social group had actually taken power under Stalin. It was Stalin bringing yeah, them into being. They came into being and they used Stalin. The reason for its, for its vicious nature had to do with the fact that it couldn't become a system. The reason for the purges too are very much part of it. It was a, an inherently, uh, not contradictory, but conflictual system with laws opposing each other in a desperate search for some way to get the thing going. In my view, Stalin went, went, went for the purges. I think you can, if you don't adopt the state capitalist viewpoint, try and understand what was really happening, come to understand what was really happening there, why it reached such depths, and why it came to an end. Take a capitalist viewpoint, you don't understand anything at all of it, including the very obvious fact that it didn't base itself on profit. It desperately wanted to, but it couldn't do that. One minute. Okay, <clears throat> so what, what I, I, I said is that, um, in my view, the ideals of Lenin and Trotsky were in fact the same as that of Marx. The conception of permanent revolution, Trotsky, comes directly from Marx. It's, it's, it's in fact a minor adaptation to it in, in the particular conditions. He's saying that the working class has to take